What do you got? Let's pull them. What kind of questions you got like to put? Now, shall we use the usual rule and insist that Brian start it off? Oh, yes, I agree with that rule. I'd say Brian or Phil. I mean, after all, he's uh, Phil? Yeah, yeah, Phil. Yeah, I'm not here often, that's true. <laughs> yeah, get him well, too. We need a couple of good ones. We'll take any, as a matter of fact. Come on up. I, I don't know. I, I feel like we should uh, defer to maybe people with some open books that may have some questions. Mm -hmm. Questions? Is Igor? I thought I heard some questions. What do you say? He's still rapping. He's deferring to people with open books. The heck with the book. Come on, what kind of question you got for tonight? You. What are you working on? You know, I'm. I'm Teaching a bunch of 18-year-olds uh, about the Republic, so. What are you saying? 18-year-olds oh, awesome. yeah. teaching about 18-year-olds <laughs> the Republic. What questions do they What's have? What's he doing? He's teaching Plato's Republic. They couldn't mean that. Yeah. How can you yeah. teach Plato's Republic? And they're mostly Republic? intro kids like this. Yeah. yeah. No, it's. Yeah. By the way, do you have a question about that curious word? I got lots of questions about it, and uh, but. Uh, are they your question? In general, I'm always wondering how to do it better. You can pass the buck. Yeah, I don't mind passing the buck. I really should have a more specific question of mine, but. Uh. Uh. I think he's pointing to your wife. Either way, the oh. left or right. Oh. Any questions you have? Yes. Sorry, guys. Uh, yeah. Ready? Sure. Okay, we're shopping for questions. Come on, who's got one? He has a question. Not really. No, okay, and we pass the buck. Wait a minute. Do you think those that are celebrating their 49th birthday should be able to have a question? Yeah. I mean, just what do you think? Yeah. One. Um, I was wondering if there's a direction that you're going to be uh, going on dreams. It looks like there's a lot of work you're doing. What's the question? If, if there's a, a way that he will be going in dreams, since he's doing a lot of work on dreams right now. Uh, it's uh, not true. Dialogues and... No, I haven't done a lot of work. Oh, <laughs> yes, you have. 70 yeah, something pages is a work. lot of work. No. <laughs> right, 100 pages is not a lot of work. Hip-hopping on top of Maria's question, um, we all know the Orange Sutra. Are you ever going to write a uh, Blue Sutra on dreams? You did, you did midwifery. Do you have interest in writing a book on dreams ever? No. <laughs> well, if so, why not? Curious that. I just got a bunch of stuff I've written on dreams. Oh, different essays? Matter of fact, this is a uh, I was asked for a couple and I sent them and Jane was said, I buy copies. I said I forgot what it was I sent them. I just sent them a couple. So I didn't even. I'm imagining I got, I don't know, maybe six, seven, eight, I don't know. Well, you've put together books before, certainly, that are several essays or several dialogues in one book. Could you do yeah, that with these? That's true. Uh -huh. Yeah, that okay. I'll put them together in a book. Do we have to wait? Sure. That's good. Especially you. <laughs> I don't have to wait. You're the only one in here. <laughs> but we're not getting a question out of all of this. Yeah, we are. Well, <laughs> what kind of question would you like? We get it. A hand is up. Do you want to go ahead of him? No, no, no. I don't have a question really. <laughs> uh, well, what do you think about this? I was this wondering, uh, what do you make of uh, Socrates' 
distinction between opposites in the Phaedo. Because in that last argument, he talks about soul bringing life, but he also has life and death in the, the pre previous discussion of opposites, which he calls practical opposites. And so he, he's, he says there's a distinction, but then he uses the oh, same terms in each, at least life. Okay, can you generate a question out of that then? Yes, it is true. He talks about life and death yeah. and opposites. Right. As the great Chinese philosopher said, so what? Yeah, so, so in the earlier argument on opposites, yes. he says, just like being asleep comes to be from being awake, so too being dead comes to be from being alive. Mm -hmm. But in the later argument, he makes an argument that the soul is imperishable and immortal because it always brings with it life. Mm -hmm. uh, but he said that the earlier distinction of opposites yeah. were practical opposites. Yeah. So I was wondering, if he, is he being fair? Well, I'd go for the side that he's not being fair. <laughs> but come on, what, come on, you have to get a question out of that. Come on. Yeah, I, I, I just, I'm wondering See, if we can ultimately... The difference uh, between them is ING, ING, participle, right? In what respect? One is the opposites, life and death. The others are in processes of becoming. Uh-huh. Therefore, they're not opposites. They're transitions. And that's why he needs two separate arguments for the two. No. Let me just check okay. on my colleague, Rhonda. <laughs> Do you think I can get away with that, Rhonda? It doesn't look like it. That looks not good, okay. No, it doesn't look like it. It doesn't? What was missing? Well, he sees something. I don't know. Yeah, I don't think he's then, he to then he has to make, then he has to come it, back. Yeah, but I, you're not satisfied with what he said, are you? <laughs> I don't know if I'm satisfied. I, I like th just thinking about it. Well, there's also ER too. The ER, the like he says, you know, being quicker comes to be from being slower. <clears throat> That's with the earlier opposites, the so-called mm -hmm. pragmatic opposites. But where did he put a uh, war and peace? Huh? Where did he put war and peace? I think that would be pragmatic, but he did. Here's the issue, so one comes out of the other. These are expressed as separate and distinct. Um, do you think it's true, by the way, that uh, the living come out of the dead? Or where, what are your thoughts about where do the where do the living come from? Like where where do you come from? What, what? They, they come from the world of the dead. The world of the the dead. Oh. Well, then it can't be death if there's some kind of like vitality in death. That's right. Therefore, there must be a process. That must be going on between these opposites. So, uh, um, what do you make of the fact that you're alive? 
It's amazing. It's nice. <laughs> huh? I think it's beautiful. Did that answer the question to say it's beautiful? I'm not sure what the question, what do you make of it, means. Oh, that's easy. I want to see whether he's puzzled by his own existence. That's all. He probably is, but first he's still amazed. But did he tell us what he is amazed about, about living? Go ahead. Oh, what is it that you find amazing? The opportunity to know the self, the, the, well, everything hangs together. Yeah, are you amazed that uh, a blade of grass lives as well? Or just you and people? No, a blade of grass as well. All the living things you wonder yeah. about. What do you wonder about? Why there's something rather than nothing? Sure. He said, oh. Yeah, wait, wait, go ahead, go ahead. Well, I think one of the mysteries about life, maybe the, the most, perhaps the, the biggest, most immediately apparent mystery of life is what is the intelligence behind? Because you can't find life without finding order. And you can't find that life, that order in life without inferring there is an intelligence or a mind behind it. My colleague is saying, this presupposes something intelligible. Yes. In fact, intelligible is practically a, a definition for life. Because life then must be having some kind of process or something going on, right? And that's said to be the destiny of all living things, including mankind. And that presupposes intelligibility. But how, how can you discover whether or not it's the case for, like Nancy has the question she keeps bugging me about, uh, why does the dog have fleas? Like, why didn't God create the universe so that the dogs don't have fleas? What the hell is wrong? You would say. Or, why do people have cancer? Same thing. Oh, it's intelligible. See, she has one of these combs and she goes through the pup and collects them. And she has a box and she puts them all in because she wants to send them to someone. I never did find out who she's going to send them to, but Donald do you have any pets? Yeah, that sounds good. Okay. It could be pets, yeah. Good point. No, no. Come on. Uh, is, is there any intelligibility in life? How do you discover it? Through every facet, yeah. one primary is dreams. What, what? Dreams. Oh, through dreams. Hey, if <coughs> dreams are intelligible, life is intelligible. Because they're meaningful. And if they're meaningful, <coughs> they open up your life and you can see something intelligible in all and behind all dreams. Mm -hmm. Did you go for that? Yeah, but it seems to put the Pardon? it seems to put the lie to the problem of a dog having fleas. Like if we're able to explore our dreams, then who gives a damn whether or not the dog has fleas? So all we have to do is find out why that dog gathers fleas and say that's your problem. <laughs> but he sure enjoys scratching. <laughs> no, no, equally well. You're saying. It's through dreams that disclose the nature of people's problems that are unique to themselves that shows the intelligibility. Sorry? Ah! If problems, then 
possible solution. And if repeatedly dreams show that it's not possible, not merely possible, but likely, then that shows there must be some source of dreams. That's intelligible. Is that right? Yes. Uh, uh, miss? Miss? Yes. What's the source of dreams? You ever have dreams? Mm -hmm. Then you'd likely know where they came from. No. Isn't that amazing? No, I don't know where they come from. Which asked Gavin. Yeah. yeah. Look, look behind you. There's someone offering an yeah, answer. He's pointing to his hair. They come out of your hair? <laughs> ask him. He's, it, go ahead, ask him. Does it come out of your hair? It comes out of your head. Oh, it comes out of your head. Wait a minute. How did they get in your head? From the past or future? From? From the past or future. What paints it? What creates it? Did you do it? Yes. Did you go in there and make each one of those characters in the dream? Or did they come by themselves? <laughs> yeah, that's a lot. Just the wall is big. Wow. Is that a good answer? Then what's he going? What's he going to do if he can't fit that much in his head? How? Would, how is it that they come from his head? Yes. Yeah. How would you answer that? No, I'd ask him. Go ahead. Well, if you can't fit that much in your head, then what? Makes, what are you going to do about that? What makes you think they come from your head? Um, <laughs> so when he's dreaming, he doesn't have anything else in his head, so there's room for the dream. There's room for the dream. I agree with you, but what puts it in there? Yeah, that's good. Question mark. Question mark. Good answer. Yeah. Yes, sir. Didn't didn't you think when you first started you, you talked about the fact that later in the dialogue Socrates develops that his soul is mortal, and you had some problem with life and death with that. I'm not sure what exactly your question. Well, it's also in the midst of that section where he talks about his search for the cause, causes of things, why things are caused the way that they are. Um, I believe that's because he's making the case that the soul causes life or brings life. And this is an argument he makes to debunk the idea that the soul could ever receive death. Yeah. Therefore, it's right. immortal. Yeah, I got it. And imperishable. But is it a contradiction like you began to say? Um, well, the contradiction, you know, it's more of a kind of puzzle about how he explains opposites, right? Like he says, the earlier opposites are practical opposites. But when he talks about life coming from death or death coming from life, it seems like he's out of the practical opposites mm. arena at that point. Mm. But I'm wondering, you know, another question I have now is why did the people there, 
let him get away with all these distinctions without challenging him. Yeah. Uh, how does he end that question about causes? I, I think with what I was just, uh, what do you have in mind? <laughs> he explores the idea of cause, and he gives the example of beauty. Right. Yes. Now, do you recall what he says about that? Well, he says he gives himself the safe answer. Yeah. Uh -huh. That things are beautiful by beauty, because of beauty. Doesn't care whether or not it has a fine color or shape or these other things that people call causes of beauty. But he doesn't say by participation. Hmm. He says, I don't know. I just know that beauty, beautiful things are made beautiful by beauty. Mm -hmm. That's all. How? Why? I don't know. Same kind of answer in a way we're getting about dreams. Who knows the real cause? We can hypothesize, right? Because it certainly looks like whatever is creating dreams is the most artful kind of thing in our universe. Right? Just look, look here. According to studies, every 90 minutes, people dream. And when they have different episodes and shifts in a dream, there are shifts not in one dream, but there are different dreams the same evening or night. And if that's the case, right, and we have six to uh, seven billion people on the planet, and it's happening, therefore, likely four times a night, right? to that many billion people, and each of them is intelligible. And by the way, uh, would it not follow that in every universe, if there are intelligent beings there, they're equally dreaming? Likely. All living things that reach a level of intellectual development are going to dream. Because it's through dreams they can understand themselves and the destiny of man. So, uh, what's going on now? Let's see, 365 days times four. Uh, wouldn't you agree whatever is creating the dream is rather busy? Is that fair? Fair. And each one is artfully produced? Artfully. Each one vivid? Vivid. And no one ever wakes up in the middle of the dream and says, that's not me, the hell with this dream. Right? You identify with every one of them, it's done so perfectly. How many pictures have you looked at and said, that's truly me? None. That's right. But you never do that in a dream. Yeah, you recognize yourself, that's me, that's other people. It's an amazing production. And this is only one planet. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh, I had a question, but I, did Raphael get his in? I think no, you were yes, okay please. if you'd like to go. Okay. No, you had your hand. Yeah, up. you were in front of me in the queue. Well, I, I think you kind of already covered it, but I was just going to move the question a little forward. Because there occurs to me that there's, you can infer close connection between dreams and the interesting word you have there, destiny. Yeah. The two seem to be interesting a lot. Yeah. The or, or you can even say that you can unlock the destiny of humanity through dreams. Yeah. That's right. Therefore, there's one vision behind all of those billions upon billions of dreams. From well, countless years, from you can push it forward and say that there's one vision behind all those dreams and behind destiny. Yeah. What is that? No, yeah, go ahead. No, I don't know, I'm asking you. No, 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 no. Come on, try it. Well, You're asking, what is it that, what is it, what is involved in the, in human destiny that can be expressed in a dream, or is a dream? Could the destiny of man be itself a dream? 
that can be cap that can be actualized, or is it only, as I say, merely a dream? If you go down that road, then what is not a dream? Yeah, that's true. Because you're really mm-hmm. extending a notion of what is a dream or dreamlike really far when you carry it to, to the level of, of this well, idea of destiny. Well, if you accept what we're saying about dreams, it's equally true about daydreams, and it's equally true about a single thought. Uh-huh. And so all yeah. life is intelligible if you know how to read it and understand it and see the meaning behind it. But again, that implies yes. that there is a source to all that intelligence. Yeah, 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 that's true. Go ahead. <laughs> you see, I happen to have gotten an ancient text. I found it under a rock. Those, it's a good place to find it. Yeah, them. because a lot of times you can find interesting things under rocks. <laughs> now that's different than the kind that go with bagels. So, and on the, under this rock, there was a statement written in Scalabionia, which is a language only I understand. And it said, the maker of dreams went to the dream college where he learned his art. Oh. Oh. Where is this dream college? In Taxa. Oh, only time to see Yeah. So he was like a freshman dream maker. Yeah. yeah. So the so dream master got his degree at the great college of dreams at Taxley, the academy in Taxley, where most of the gods go to get their education. <laughs> but must there not be a source for the wisdom of dreams? There must be an intelligence behind must it. Must be intelligence behind well, it. Well, actually, there's a, there's at least two. And that's the subject they teach at this college. But I was just going to say that, that there must be at least two. Yeah. There must be an intelligence behind dreams yeah. and destiny. So yeah. then there there must be a source behind. Yeah, that's the teacher. Intelligence that's the itself. teacher's attacks on Yeah. What's their mascot? Yeah, they have mascots there. No, no. No, Pierre, Raphael was saying that there, not only is the intelligence a source, but there has to be another source behind the intelligence. Of course. I don't know why he said it, but but why do you say of course? Well, because it couldn't, it couldn't exist without a reason for its existence, and that's a cause. So therefore, right, if you get together and talk about what is the common destiny for all living things? It's either going to be multiple or singular. If it's singular, then everything's moving towards the same direction and goal. Must there not be a cause for that? Yeah. Well, that's the point Raphael was making. There has to be a cause for it. Or, or at least a yeah, condition. but it cannot be intelligence, it has to be the cause of intelligence. Yeah, or at least a condition. Yeah. But what, uh, what about the goal? That's another matter. Did you well, talk about ahead. goal? What matter I mean, you make of it? He's talking about the source of the intelligibility, That's right. but you're talking about the goal of these intelligible Go ahead. Things. What do you think it is? What do you think it is? No, no, go ahead. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's just going back to its origin. What is the source? God. It's this intelligible... No, no, it can't be intelligible. It has to be the cause of the intelligible. Well, that is intelligible. The cause of the intelligible is intelligible. No. Oh, I'm just repeating the same thing twice. It's both the, the parent and the child. No, no, no. no. That's, 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 sense. that's a mistake. A mistake. Yeah, a parent can't be a child. Ah. This Oedipus. Now, the curious thing about our game 
and through the efforts of a great many nice people working together on the Saturday mornings and through the help of the Balboas, is to say that the purpose behind all of this, the involvement of the whole thing, is nothing other than the song. Which then is the prize of the intelligible. And he calls that the one self. Since everything you say about the self only follows from a pure understanding of the one itself. So then, are you applying the dia negativa to both one and self when you're discussing it at that level? No, not one and self. One self. You have one slash self. Yeah, because all the negatives that describe the negatives are then attributed to the self. They correlate. They map one to one. No, okay. No, no. Therefore, it's called one self. Got it. Got it. Hey, if so, then every living thing must have a self. Then we're really trying to do is understand ourselves. While well, we're not having wars and problems. Mm. Elections. Yeah, that happens once in a while in history. Okay. Can we ever? Can we ever? Uh -huh. Can yeah. we ever completely understand or know? Oh, that's so. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> I have always be pleased when someone asks you a yes or no question. Oh, I know. That's so funny. Because you can give one of those two answers and walk away. Yeah. Right, they can't do anything. Right? So you can't lose. Yeah, they can't lose. So always be thankful for someone asks you a yes or no question. Yeah. Hey, I'm, I'm uh, wait, wait, wait. I do have a follow-up. Oh, no, 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 no. It's got more. Go for it. How do you know that we can know the self? Pardon? How do you know that we can know the self? It's obvious. Well, I'm so glad. No, no, that's an answer. Yeah. <laughs> how? Not to me. Yes. How? How can you know it is knowable? Because it's obvious. Well, it's not to me. Would you would you mind uh, breaking it down? You don't have to break it down. That's honest. Hey, you ever walk down the street and someone says, "Hey, Jeff," you don't say, "Who the hell is Jeff?" <laughs> you know immediately they're calling you. <laughs> That's not the kind of self I'm talking about. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Come on, why can't it be that obvious, Jeff? <laughs> That's, that's an image of me. Thank you. You all know the difference between an image of the self and me. Oh, you're digging yourself a big philosophical hole. <laughs> like, if I, if I exist after I die, that whole jet thing it. went out the window. So it's got to be something more different than that. You can tell the difference between the self and an image of the self. You just said it. Yeah. You can or cannot tell the difference. Sorry, I missed it. No, you just made the distinction between an image of the self and the self. Therefore, you have a good idea of the difference between the two. Yes, and I, uh, it doesn't mean I, I know what the one self is. It just means that it can't be Jeff. That's all I'm saying. Well, let me repeat something else. It's all obvious. Therefore, it's canova. Canova. Goodness, she's going to Yeah. We can't lose Richard. <laughs> <laughs>
kids coming along. They gotta go better and faster and not slower and larger. Uh. Thank you, Leah. Thank you for bringing me. Yeah. So, so did you slip in the soul? Did you mention the soul? In that? Uh, no. But, what, yeah, in passing, right. Well, I noticed it, and I was wondering, how do you fit that in there with the self? In terms of the source... The cause of the intelligible is the one self. Keep going. You okay. You your question. And so the soul then is the. The caring, planning, executive. That's all I and G. Notice right, right, right. Yeah. Therefore, it's functioning. The soul functions in a certain way. Right. Okay, so this is all soul. And it has some reasoning, functioning. has some desires, has some repetitive. Right. Right. Okay. Cognitively, image thinking, ING, believing, ING, understanding, ING, knowing, ING, right? Right. They're all activities. Yeah. Not, not substance. Yeah. Right? What functions through them, for them, is the soul. Is that it? If you want to, would you like some pudding? Okay, sure. Uh, I don't have a proof. Well, she does. No. No, 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 no. Could you get it? Are there not quotes you might find somewhere that could show the relationship between the soul and the self? The soul functions. Well, through. there was the quote. Are you talking about the quote I showed you the earlier? Self. Are you talking about the quote I showed you earlier? Oh, there, the one we worked on last week. You saw that one. You were here last week, right? Yeah. Well. So how come she has a question? Yeah. Well, that's. Maybe she doesn't know she knows. Yeah, she's looking at her notes, so good sign. Yeah, I think I, I don't know that I know. Yeah. <laughs> but I might know that I don't know that I know. So that's good. <laughs> if I get that far, then I might tackle the next one. <laughs> so this is helpful. A few moments ago, you, when you were talking about the one self, you had slipped in that the destiny is to understand the one self, if I, if I heard correctly. So that implies turning about yes. to the one self. Yes. So then that would further reinforce and explain why dreams foster a kind of reflection. That's right. Or even perhaps you can say that that is the purpose of dreams in the first place. So then the whole thing is linked together. It's all a grand conspiracy for the betterment of humanity. All these different aspects are working in unison and, and in a kind of harmony then. You're saying well. But you should say of course. Of course. <laughs> Um, so what question? You, uh, just before, were you saying that the soul is purely functional and it doesn't have a substance? And the self is what has the substance? Hmm. Yeah, go ahead. Is that what you were saying? Yeah. So how can how can how can you how can the soul leave the body if it doesn't have substance? That's a separate question. Because if you ask the how, uh, 
There are a variety of ways you know in which that can be done. I don't think you really have a question, do you? I don't remember even saying that. Well, I, I, I'm just... Uh, well, if, if something doesn't have a substance, then how can it leave a place? Like... Uh, it doesn't well, match. No. Well, it happens to do much generally some kind of boundary or a mystery. Well, uh, I guess what is the nature of the, of the soul uh, if it's purely functional and doesn't have a substance? But you see, you're answering your question and you're making believe it's a question. You're saying it's something that functions in a very interesting way. Watch what it is. Okay. Fast, that's easy. So I, I had an I had an idea of what kind of answer I want. Like <laughs> it's blue <laughs> or something. Would you say the soul is a function of the self or is the soul the functioning mode of the self? Or either of those? Would you as far as saying that? Well, you have an answer to that. Well, that was my... I was looking for a more elevated answer. No, no, you have, you have an answer. And it's more important. You have an answer about the relationship to the soul and the self. But the self comes first. And the way in which the self functions is through what we call collectively the word of the soul. But is the soul the function? Because you're saying the soul doesn't have a substance. So is the soul merely the action of the self? You probably want more Let's try. Yeah. See, the, uh, the, the thing that's most interesting in all of this discussion is that um, behind this is this issue. interesting about the Greek Jew is that this image of the self is nothing other than and can be represented by the Papalogos. Hmm. And this Papalogos brings together all kinds of fictions that we accept as ourselves. Therefore, in the Greek world, when death occurs, that happens has great power. It can change within itself uh, elements of the soul. Which means capable of Thinking, reasoning, feeling, that what survives in Hades, your Papalogos. And over time, it loses its vitality until finally it's only a shadow.
That's extremely interesting. The Pamphonas has, has a mode of existence that continues after death and behaviors. And that's why uh, when Odysseus goes down into Hades, uh, he sees all of these apologos and they're filtering away until finally they're nothing. But there are some people who are capable of avoiding that. And that's what he calls the monsters. And in the story itself, he says, Heracles. He spends his time with the gods and then returns to Hades since he still has a Babylonian and it is his soul. So in the paper, uh, he says, hey, philosophers from Canisa, true philosophers from Canisa. Can, can miss that? Yes, quite right. Can miss No. Avoid. Avoid. No. 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 Meaning they don't have an image any longer? Right, oh. Okay. Yeah, I love it. Here's your writer. Some people even read Homer for entertainment, which is astonishing. That's why they don't have to understand it. Hmm. Because they already do understand? That's what the word entertainment means. Mm. Yeah. Going back to your question about what is the price that's paid for the image, I think the answer is obvious. The price people pay is a true knowledge and understanding of the Sasha. As long as that image is there, then they, they, they are incapable of having a true knowing and understanding of the self. But it's also a matter of degrees, isn't it? I mean, there are, there's more, there are more powerful and obstructive images than others that sure. keep you from, from seeing. Of course. But there's still chains. There's still chains. Yeah. There's still obstructions. But does not having any remaining image of the self mean that you now know truly what the self is? Let's see if I can answer this one. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. it. I like it, yeah. She makes fun of me all the time. <laughs> okay. Wait a minute. Thank you, guys. And happy birthday. Yeah. Anniversary. 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 Happy birthday. I see. Happy birthday. Happy birthday anniversary. Yeah. <laughs>